Okie dokie, here goes another round of all these cherished and well-remembered Capcom games. Who could forget Battle Circuit? So, we got a whole bunch of characters. You got Blue Man, you got DeviantArt, uh, what the frick is that? You got Pink Ostrich, and you got uh, Captain Homosexuality. Spooky, scary skeleton. Well, I guess that guy wasn't a fan. Wasn't a fan of that dumb meme with the skeletons and he had to shoot them down. Okay, so, uh, first off, let's just point out that the entire game won't be flashing red just like this. That they only do this for the first level. It would be extremely grating if it was just this the whole time. So, there's a fairly simple concept here. Just use your pink ostrich to harass that man with the brain tumor over there. I mean, why else would he have a head shaped like that? What was that one meme with the... Uh, John McCain's brain tumor was sticking out on the Senate floor and everybody saw it. It was very rude. I gotta find that. Okay, well... <clears throat> That sickly cancer patient didn't put up much of a fight, did he? Lucky yes. See, that's the thing. You want to be a disability advocate and put disabled people in high positions, and then they can't defend themselves when, when the shit goes down, and they start getting pecked to death by a wild animal. So, um, they've got a, a basic reward system. Can't have it too complex. I mean, this is an arcade game. Gotta keep things simple. So, since a new arcade collection's coming out pretty soon, here's my suggestion to you, Capcom, since you've still got 30 days to make it happen. If you want your arcade collection to be a better simulacrum of the arcade experience, what you should do is ship a joystick with the game, but not just any joystick. What you gotta do is get a bottle of syrup and take it to the assembly line and pour it over all the joysticks so that the joysticks are uh, sticky when they go out to the customers because that's how it is in the real arcades. The controls are always just fucking sticky with, you, uh, with who knows what because you gotta share it with the general public. Who even did this? Ugh. So we got a variety of Capcom characters watching us in the background there. I think that's the final fight guy in the green pants. And when I say the final fight guy, I don't mean final fight guy because, you know, final fight had that thing where they tried to re-release the game where you could play as the guy who was named Guy and it was all so horribly confusing. Things often get lost in translation when things come over from Japan. I mean, as I've mentioned before, there was that thing with Final Fantasy where they were on a different number than us, so uh, Japanese Final Fantasy IV was American Final Fantasy II, and that was just an awful thing. And not just that, just generally when Japanese games come over, sometimes the titles get translated really weirdly and it doesn't sound like anything an English speaker would ever naturally say. They'll have these whacked out games called like Super Hyper Fighting 3D Go 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 You Bring Great Shame to Your Family or something like that. You know what I'm talking about. Hopefully. And, in a strange turn of events, our next opponent is, uh, Japanese Elvis? Pretty much anything goes in these types of games. There really isn't a consistent theme of any kind. You got pink ostriches with an eye patch. you got Japanese Elvis. Gosh, you know, earlier I was talking about how Japanese things tend to get a little, uh, a little confused in translation, and I guess that works the other way around too. Sometimes Western media gets a little uh, bastardized on its way across the sea. Although I do think they captured Elvis's essence here pretty well. I mean, there have been examples of uh, Western media that kind of gets kind of confused. Like, uh, for example, the Japanese always eat KFC on Christmas, and uh, 
there was that incident where there was that statue of Colonel Sanders and they, they threw it into a, a canal because of a baseball game and lost in translation. So we got a new character now, uh, some kind of biogenetic freak of nature. Elvis doesn't stand a chance. You look at this guy and you think, Jesus, I bet, I bet the Chinese are making something like that in a lab somewhere. That's gonna be the latest horror that they unleash upon the world. COVID-19 today, the thing from Little Shop of Horrors tomorrow. Ah, uh, sweet. Man-made horrors beyond my comprehension. Yeah. Okay, so let's move on to the next thing. There are many games in this compilation, and if we just did one per episode, we would be here for like a freaking year. So chronologically, this is the newest game in the compilation. This one came out in 2001, while everything else is uh, far older than that. And you would think that would mean that it's on newer hardware, and is therefore a more advanced game, but you would be wrong. I think they just took their old arcade board from the 90s and tried to squeeze one last game out of it because uh, this looks quite primitive for a game from 2001. This would have come out the same year as uh, Devil May Cry or Jack and Daxter or uh, Luigi's Mansion, but that's perfectly acceptable though. It's still a decent game. I mean, there were some talented sprite artists at Capcom back then. So I can't claim to know what the inspiration for this game was, but if I could wager a guess, I'd say that somebody at Capcom played Metal Slug and that they felt a bit jealous and they tried to make their own Metal Slug type game because uh, those tanks with the, the medieval night masks over them look very Metal Slug-esque. Capcom wanted to do what other companies were doing. So, bullet hell shmups are definitely not something I'm particularly good at, especially when trying to play them through the capture window. But I'll do my best. Good god, look at all that shit. How is anybody supposed to play this? You know, I would imagine that the topic of a uh, planes and uh, combat in video games is kind of an odd topic in uh, Japanese games because you know that the Japanese were on the wrong side of World War II and if they were to try and make a World War II fighter type of game but which which side do they support I mean obviously if you make it about American planes attacking Japan then you, your home audience isn't gonna buy it but if you make a game about Japanese planes attacking the US the, and obviously the U.S. isn't going to buy it. You can't make the real-life equivalent of that, uh, that imaginary game from South Park where uh, you have to bomb Pearl Harbor. Remember that from the, the Chimpoko Man episode that they bought like a, an N64 game where you had to blow up Pearl Harbor? <laughs> okay, we got him. See, there he is. He's burning away in a... A sea of flame, as the radical Islamists say, we will engulf you in a sea of flame. Do they still say that? We got any radical Islamists that watch this channel? <clears throat> Hopefully not, I feel like I could indirectly get in trouble if that were the case. Okay, yeah, that's enough of that, you get the idea. Next up we'll do Final Fight. Can't go wrong with that. Somebody scream mashed potatoes? That was mashed potatoes. <laughs> 